Welcome back to the shop. I'm Steve with Repair Masterclass, and today I'm repatting a Bundy clarinet. I know several of you will ask why or is it worth doing, and I totally understand where you're coming from. But let's face it, these instruments were well built and can take any amount of repair we put at it. They're built like a Mack truck, though they may sound like one as well, but in this particular case, the family owns it, it has memories uh, with it, and they want it fixed. And I'm good with that, so here we go. The word repad can mean different things at different shops. I have two classifications, student and performance level. This is definitely a student level repad. That means we're going to replace the pads, redo all the key corks, clean everything really well, and do a great set of adjustments on it. This level of repad does not get a lot or really any key fitting, but uh, maybe a bit of swedging where needed and next to no tone hole work unless there really uh, are some bad problems. I put a lot more work into a performance repad as a result, and the price is significantly higher. We start by breaking the repair down, removing all the keys, and as I do this, I'm watching out for any bent rods or screws that are more difficult to remove. When I find those, I put them in the rod block upside down as a way for me to remember where I have issues later on in the process and I can fix them. Next is taking the pads out. This one had mostly original pads still, and those were installed with an amber shellac. I'm using the acetylene torch to warm up the glue to release the pads, but in several cases, the shellac was so old that the pads just popped out when I touched them. Okay, and this is the real reason the instrument needs work. Most of the pads have been eaten by bugs. It sounds more gross than it actually is. Have you ever found a weevil in your grain or a cereal? It's sort of like that. When an instrument's put into storage, especially under your bed, these bugs that typically live in the carpet of most of your homes, happily eating the foam backing from off your carpet, smell the felt of these pads and move right in. The bug is really easy to kill, but their eggs, well, those are a fascinating study in survivability. Unless we chemically neutralize them, the bugs could hatch over a decade later. So we need to chemically clean everything to remove the eggs, hence the repad, of course. Not to mention, there's very little pad even left after these bugs' little feast. Notice how the felt and the skin are gone from this pad and only the cardboard backing is left? That's because the bugs have eaten everything away. Look at the hole drilled into this pad by the bugs. They don't want the skin, they want the felt under the pad, so they just drill a hole right through it. Next is removing all the key corks. They're just old and need to be redone. After the key corks are gone, I buff the keys and the key posts back to a really shiny gleam, and then chemically clean the instrument. I did all of this off camera. I don't have cameras set up in my camera room, and the buffing's really dirty. I'll do another video on that process later. After it's out of the cam, I dry it off, but the cleaning is far from over. I lay the keys out by the size of cork that they're gonna receive, and then proceed to clean the pad cups. The buffing compounds build up in there and stick a bit to any glue left over, so I scrape out what I can, and then use acetone to break down the rest, wiping them clean with a cotton swab. I'll apply the key corks next using contact cement. I apply this to the key and the cork material, and after they have set up a bit, when I touch them together, they'll be there for years. Notice how I wipe each key clean after applying glue? There's no room to be sloppy here when a little more care can really make a difference in your work. I use a combination of cork and synthetic felt for all my instruments. I use cork where I need to sand in final adjustments and felt everywhere else. Some say you can use sand in the felt, but I've never really liked the result of that. It changes kind of the touch and feel of the key a bit, and I just don't like it. Thank you. 
Once the corks and filter are in place, I clean them up by sanding them to a perfect fit. And then, more cleaning. This time, the hinge rod tubes and screw socket ends of each key. They're full of old dirt and buffing compounds from polishing them, some acetone and a bristled pipe cleaner, and they get really clean really fast. Choosing pads for a clarinet seems simple, but it's one of the more complicated aspects of any repair. Not only do you want the perfect diameter fit of, of each pad for the cup, but the thickness of the pads really matters to the geometry of the pad coming down over the tone hole. So choose the right thickness for the instrument, then the right pad size for each cup. Now here comes the single most controversial, not to mention annoying, topic in the instrument repair world, pad adhesive. I just can't wait for the comments on this one. So to those of you who want to pontificate on your knowledge here, use whatever works for you. I've tried them all too, and I really like these amber glue sticks from JL Smith, and enough said on that topic. Getting the right amount of whatever adhesive you use in the cup is really important. And sometimes you get a bit too much and need to remove some, and other times you need a little bit more. Even after 26 years of doing this, I still have to make adjustments uh, every time I do this. Now that all the pads are in, key corks are on, and everything is clean, it's time to make this instrument play. I sort my keys by body section and start putting them on. Oh, wait, I'm not done cleaning. I, I forgot to clean the posts. Buffing compounds and years of hand gunk are still stuck in there even after the chem bath. So more pipe cleaner uh, and needle spring work, and then I'll put it together. As I install each key, I check it for balance around the toe hole using the feeler gauge. A feeler gauge is a very thin piece of mylar that helps me feel for even balance and pressure around the tonal, around the entire edge of each pad. It's not enough for it all to seal. The pad must hit the tone hole all the way around the tone hole at the exact same time and with the exact same amount of pressure. Otherwise, the pitch will bend slightly and over time the pad will wear out unevenly, causing problems. I test it with the feeler gauge, then heat up the key to melt the glue inside there, and then I float the pad around on the now slightly liquefied glue. It often takes a few attempts to get the balance just right, and sometimes more attempts, but the perfectly balanced pad is the goal here. This is also the stage during which I do the needed key fitting for this level of repad. Sometimes keys bend and need to be moved back, other times the, keys, the key is too long or too short to fit in between the posts correctly and needs to be adjusted or modified. Up to this point, nothing has really been overly technical, but key fitting and pad balancing is where the right tools and training come in. Speaking of which, if you'd like to learn how to do this type of repair yourself, you can. Check out repairmasterclass.com. I teach teachers how to repair and maintain their instruments and that of their students so every student can get on stage and perform with confidence. I offer three ways to learn. First is my emergency repair guide. Think Google for instrument repair. Right now the guide is free, so get yours before that deal goes away. The second way is group sessions offered every third Friday of the month. For one hour, I address a single repair topic and give you the step-by-step -step process so you know you're doing it right. This is a great value, and I encourage you to get your entire district to join you for the next group session. Check out the schedule at repairmasterclass.com. The third way is my online class. Sessions open up a few times a year, so check the schedule and find the time that works for you. This is the course where we take a deep dive into instrument repair. We talk about key geometry, diagnostics, needed tooling, and then we go over it in high quality video with multi-camera close-ups so you know exactly what to do, when, and how to fix those problems. They're just frankly keeping students from learning during your class time. Every now and then I'll notice a key felt or a cork that didn't adhere as well as I would have wanted it to, so no big deal, just correct it and move on. Finally, the joints are all put back together and the bridge key adjustment needs to be addressed. Once that's solid, it's time for a play test. And since I'm just a tech and not a player, I'll spare you the opportunity to hear me play.
Once it's where I want it, it's back in a highly cleaned but soon to be replaced case and back to the customer. That's all for this one. I hope to see you back in the shop with me again soon.